Ben Miller. Okay. So this is a spherical mirror because because we can think that this is small section of sphere. It's a part of sphere. And we just learn about the plane mirror. Can you tell that a plane mirror is a spherical mirror? Can you think of, or like some people talked about this one, some books talked about this one. It's a plane mirror. Plane mirror. It's a very similar to that one. You have a sinus surface over here. Here's the back of the mirror. And light pressure doesn't pass through this one, light doesn't pass through this mirror at all. So <coughs> I can even see that this is a spherical mirror because it's a part of a sphere. Can someone claim that a plane mirror is also a spherical mirror? If somebody tell you that, you know, hey, plane mirror is also a spherical mirror, then what will be your response? What will be your answer? Do you agree with the person or you just say, hey, no, it's not a spherical mirror because it's not part. So what will be your response? Anyone want to tell me? Because you know, after this, you have to learn that, hey, you need to be like a, some expertise on this one. Um, because physics is not only to get a grade or something like that, you need to have some understanding, right? So I mean, you can come in the class, and then you do homework, you like a follow lecture notes. You can get a grade A, but it doesn't mean that you are good in physics. You need to know how to talk physics. You know, need to know like how to discuss physics. Do you agree with that? If somebody claims that a plane mirror is also a spherical mirror, he said that he, he agrees on that. So why? Okay, so you agree on that, but you know, uh, I want like a reason behind that. If you agree that a plane mirror is also a spherical mirror, and you can agree on that, but why? Anyone of you guys can tell me the reason behind that? Okay, so let me talk about that. I mean, you, you don't have the answer right now. Let's say, because a sphere or like a circle, I mean, circle is a two-dimensional version of a sphere, right? So basically, sphere is a three-dimensional object. Uh, circle is like a uh, two-dimensional For simplicity, I draw this circle. Right, it's a circle, it has a center, right? Right? If I draw a circle, I'll use it here. And in my uh, drawing is not that good, you know, it should be like a circle. In the same center, it will be the radius, right? Mm -hmm. If I go further, I mean, I could draw a circle like a little bit. Okay? I can draw an another circle. To take a look, the radius of this one is smaller, the radius of this one is bigger, if you go to bigger, we keep on increasing the radius. The far better over here, you can uh, take a look on this one, it starts to become smaller and smaller and smaller, right? So if you make a, like a very big, you know, like a circle, if you make a very big circle, and I cannot draw <coughs> into this one, right? The small section of this one looks like a plane. And the person who claims that, hey, plane mirror is a spherical mirror, the person is right. But whenever he is talking about curvature, the curvature value is very large in the time. Small section of part, I mean, this, you know, this uh, very big sphere looks like a plane mirror. <coughs> so, so 
So you are right, a person is right, so in that case, okay? So, so not only, you know, like a concave and convex mirror are spherical mirror, this one is on the spherical mirror, but whenever you talk about this one, it's a special case, the sphere has a very, very big radius, okay? And a very big number in the physics we call it infinite. Okay, which is like a, the value is very, very large, we call it infinite, okay, in the physics. All right, so this person is like, right, so infinite radius, then uh, a small section gonna be like a plane mirror, and uh, we consider that plane mirror is also a spherical sphere, okay? Now, uh, I'm gonna talk about the, some terminology uh, that uh, we use for the studying this concave uh, um, and convex mirror. The first one is focus, okay? Uh, the focus is the point uh, that, uh, how to find a focus and what is the focus, so let me be a little bit lazy and erase this section over here. Let me know that like this. And for you, you might have to know, uh, draw. Okay. So uh, the focus is the point over here. So uh, a parallel ray of light, okay, so the, the ray of light parallel to the principal axis Okay, whenever it is on the side part of this mirror, okay, I just drop two for now. Okay, so um, it will get reflected from the side part. Okay, it's a very side part, the regular reflection happens. Okay, and uh, so whenever regular reflection happens, you can use the, uh, you know, the law of reflection. You can uh, draw a normal to the small section over here. And uh, similarly, you can draw the normal to this one. The direction of normal will be different, definitely, because you know, because of the curvature, it will be different. So uh, whenever it reflects from the this uh, tiny part, the law of reflection gives that the angle of incidence should be equal to angle of reflection. So basically, it will reflect like this. Okay. Uh, this is the light that is parallel to the principal axis. After the reflection from the sine part, it will form like that. Similarly, whenever you have on the other side, okay, so it will reflect like this, okay, and after the reflection from the sine part, they will meet a point. This point is called focus and I represent it as S, okay? So uh, the definition of focus is that the ray of light that is parallel to the pitch of the axis after the reflection from the sine part of the mirror, they come together and meet at a point, that point is called focus, okay? And the representation is F, okay? So F is the focus over here, focus. Now, let me define this arrow. Let me define the focal length. The focal length is the distance between the center of mirror and the focal point. This is the distance over here. This distance I represent with small f, okay? I call <coughs> small f is the Focal length. It's a length. It's a distance. Some people say focus. Some people say focal point. Okay. Don't be confused. Okay. So, uh, so one is distance. This distance from the center of the mirror to the the focal point. The other point is the, the light after the reflection. They meet at a point. That point is the and some people say focus. Let's go to the another convex mirror. So you have principal axis again. So 
So you have a risk between the which is aligned to the center of the mirror to the center of the circle over here. With the, um, again, that uh, central axis or mirror axis. So let me be a leg over here. Let me be this section over here. I can draw under the center. So definitely this is the principal axis or mirror axis, principal axis, okay? To find the focus, you have to do the same tricks. The ray of light that is parallel to the principal axis, okay? So this is the center of the mirror over here. So I will send the ray of light, okay, uh, parallel to the principal axis. Okay. Just draw the two. You can draw many, but it will make your figure like a really uh, busy, okay? So there's can too many um, lines, okay? So this is a ray of light that is parallel to the principal axis. Now, you can see the curvature, so you can see that you know we can draw the normal. You can see the normal over here, right? So, uh, but normal is not that good. Okay. So, ray of light after that, <laughs> it should reflect like this. You know, it should go this way. So, uh, it should go this way. Okay. So, ray of light after the reflection from the sine part of or met mirror, one is going down, one is going up. Basically, they are diverging, right? They never come each other, close to each other, and meet each other, right? There's no way. Because one is going down, one is going up. They are diverging. But in optics, you gotta find the point where they meet by Extrapolation, okay? So let me do extrapolation. So once you do extrapolation, right, and you want to that way. So uh, if you do the extrapolation, they meet at a point. My drawing is not good. Please take a look on the slide, okay? I have They meet at a point, okay? This point is called Focus, I just put S, is that? Okay. And similar to you know what we have discussed over here, the distance from the center of the mirror to the focus is called focal point. Okay? So I put like side to side so that you know you will know what is going on over here. So, uh, in a both mirror, concave and convex, you have a focus and uh, you have a focal length, but the way that this focus, you know, is formed over here and focus is formed over here, they look a little bit different because to find the focus over here, focal point over here, you don't have to do anything. The ray of light, after the reflection, they meet each other. But to find this focus, you have to extrapolate. Okay? So, this is called real focus and this is called virtual focus. So it's because to find the focal point for the convex mirror, you have to do the extrapolation and uh, you have that you know, focus, but we call it virtual focus, okay? So uh, both in a concave and convex mirror has focus, but one of them is real and another one is virtual. So in the exam, in the, in the, in the test, if I give a statement, that a con 
convex mirror has a virtual focus that is the real or the true statement. Okay? So if I give a statement that hey, a convex mirror has a virtual focus, that will be true statement. Okay? So uh, so we're gonna talk about that uh, near to the closer to the test one. Okay. Uh, these points are very important for your test. Um, uh, principal focus, some people say, uh, the point where parallel ray applied meet after the reflection, okay, it's called focus, and uh, the focus is going to be virtual for the convex mirror, and the focal length, we define the distance between the center of the mirror and the focal point, okay, and uh, since, since this focus is virtual, Whenever you take the value of f, this is going to be negative. Okay? So, uh, for the virtual image or virtual focus, we always take negative sign in a convention in our case. Okay? Anything virtual, just take negative. Okay? This is the sign convention in the optics. All right, so this is about the uh, focus um, for the concave <coughs> convex mirror. Um, so now, let's talk about how the image is formed. Uh, it's very interesting uh, and it's very confusing, of course. So now, uh, let me go one by one. So I just showed over here. Let me go how the image is formed by a concave mirror. Let's talk about that. It's a very uh, confusing, uh, very in point as well. Um, so the convex and concave mirror, they form the image, and uh, it depends on how the object is placed, okay? So for a concave mirror, we start with a concave mirror around it. So, uh, you have a concave mirror over here. I just put a concave mirror um, like this. Uh, for the better picture, please take a look on the slide. So, this is a concave mirror, and I will show you how the image is formed. Okay? Uh, concave mirror. Definitely, I try to draw my figure better. Okay. The shiny part of the mirror. Here. Here, okay. This is a concave mirror. Okay, so uh, we already know that you know the principal axis, the line that is passing through the center of the sphere and the center of the Mirror is called principal axis, mirror axis, central axis, whatever you say, okay? I just call this principal axis for simplicity. Principal axis. Okay? And I just talked to you guys, or just explain to you guys the focus. Let's say this is the focus F. Okay? I have focus over there. I don't have to find a focus for a given concave mirror. Now, I place an object in front of this mirror. Okay? So there are many, many cases. The first one is that if I place an object that is inside the focus. So this is the exactly over here. Put like an arrow. This is my object that is placed in front of this mirror. Okay? But object is inside the focus. So if it consider this a focus, then this is the inside the focus. So how image is formed? Okay? So uh, there are a couple of things you know uh, you have to pay attention over here whenever to find the image location. Okay. 
the force ray of light, okay? The force ray of light, you know, there are many, many ways that, you know, like that you can figure out, you know, but I have like some, you know, um, idea how to you know, uh, draw this one. Force ray of light, if the ray of light going like this at the center, it will reflect like this. This angle has to be equal, okay? So if it hit the center, it will be like this. Second one, if my ray of light, that is parallel to principal axis, from where the light should pass through. So if my ray of light, okay, so the, there are a couple of ray of light, you know, we have to pay attention. If this is a, if it hit the center of the mirror, this angle should be equal to this angle because there's no curvature at the center, okay? It's hitting exactly in the center. The second one, it is hitting in the parallel to this principal axis. These two ray of light is parallel. Definitely, it's a reflecting surface, this one, this light will be reflected. And how it will be reflected? <coughs> Anyone of you guys have an idea? We go through the first ray and then the principal axis. So you mean like it definitely it will reflect. It will go this way, it will go this way, or this will be both this way? The last the last one. It will go down, you mean? Yes. yes. So in a way, because like it can have any curvature, like you know, it go this way, it can go this way, it can go this way. It will end up on the right side of that ray. I'm telling you one thing. If my ray of light can pass the principal axis, this light pass through. Well, It's very hard to draw otherwise, you know, because there are so many ray of light. So you need to catch only some more ray of light. So if this is a parallel to the principal axis, it should pass to the focus. That's how we define the focus, right? So now, ray of light, if it is parallel, it will pass to the focus. So whenever you, you draw, like that, my drawing is not that good. Okay, so this is the you will pass to the focus. Now you can draw a couple of more area of light, but like you don't have to draw um, um, to find the point where these two ray of light meet. Uh, you know, just in two ray of light. Okay, so after you know, like you know like a reflection from the this you know mirror surface, these two ray of light, they're going to diverge, okay? This is the divergent, because one is going this direction, one is going down direction. They never meet each other, okay? They never, never meet each other. So to, to find a point where they meet each other, each other, you need to draw an extrapolation. They appear to meet over here. At this point, you have an image is formed. Okay. So uh, I, I mean, like the book has a different way, but you know, I want to like follow my style because this is gonna give like a very precise location of image. 
if your object is inside the focus for a concave mirror, then there are a couple of ray of light. One is the light that is hitting at the center, because center doesn't have any curvature of this angle should be this angle. And second one is the ray of light that is a part of the principal axis. It should pass through the focus. It's a focus that, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. It's not my focus. You should have told me. My focus point is this one, sorry. It passes the focus and the rear of light after the reflection from the mirror surface, they are diverging. They are diverging. There is no way that they are going to meet each other until and unless we extrapolate. Okay, let me redraw this one uh, because my, my drawing is too bad. Uh, so, uh, so after the extrapolation, they meet each other. And this point is the point they appear to meet. This point is the image, okay? Um, so their image would be formed like this. Okay, for the concave mirror having the object inside the focus. So you need at least two points to find the intersection. You can draw like more points, but it's like I know a uh, little challenging because you are trying to find the image position based on your like a uh, like a drawing, and if your drawing is not in scale, it will be difficult. Okay, so the image is formed over here. You can take a look very easy with that. You know, this is your object. This is your object object and object size and image size. You can easily imagine that image is bigger than the object, right? That means it is magnifying to your object. So concave mirror, if you place inside the object, inside the focus, then you will see bigger. Okay? So, uh, so this is one of the reasons that whenever you have like a makeup mirror, the makeup mirror has like you know like this set concave, and if you are inside the focus, you will see your face bigger. Okay. So what are the image properties over here? The image is virtual. Do you agree with that? The image is virtual because to find the image, you have to do the extrapolation. So image over here, you can write down the properties of image found over here. The image, the image properties are, one is, the first one is that it is virtual. I can easily tell that it's a virtual image. Because the image is formed because of the extrapolation. You, you have to extrapolate the ray of light. They are not meeting without you know, extrapolation. The second one is upright. If your object is arrow up, you have the same, I mean, upright. So basically, it's not inverted, some people say, not inverted. Not inverted. Some people say not inverted, or some people say upright. And this is behind the mirror. Your object is on the left hand side of this mirror, and image is found on the right hand side, so behind the mirror, okay? So number three should be behind the mirror. And like in the same upright, I mean, I already wrote that. Some people say same orientation as object. 
And uh, but I can say one more property that the image is bigger than object. Right? It's magnified. You can easily see that in this like a much bigger. Okay. So this is about the concave mirror. If you have an object that is inside the box. Okay. Um, so I think that you now I, I give you like enough information. Um, so let me go another case. So I'm going to find that whenever is a focal point, but I'm going to talk about when object is outside the focal point. Let me go another case. This is the one scenario. This is a A. Let me go to like a C, because B is like not like a that convenient to talk about here. So let me talk about the D. Or like an object is outside the focus, okay? So you have a same concave mirror, okay? Uh, you have the same concave mirror over here. And then you can draw this way. Tiny back. So you have a focus over here. You have a principal axis. Principal axis. Okay. And I should have a straight line. Okay. Uh, please refer to the figure. Okay. Uh, in the, in the slide. Okay. This is the center of the mirror. The concave mirror. Concave mirror. Now, I should look, locate the focus. Let me just put the focus over here. Let's put the focus over here. Okay. Now, my object was inside the focus over here. I want to put like outside. That means if this is the focus, I want to put like somewhere here. Right? Again, what is the same thing? Would it first draw a couple of three and five? I just need two. You don't have to draw like too many. If you draw too many, it will be confusing. The real part that is hitting in the center, right? That's the one first one I draw over people. If I just draw, let me put my people offline. Let me draw a ray of light like this, okay? It hits up with some angle, right? So it will reflect it like this. Right? This angle should be equal to this angle. I couldn't make like a better than this one, but if you have a scale, like a like a scale, you can draw like a straight line, right? This is very obvious. I just need one more ray of light to find the point where they meet. Okay? So now, let me draw a ray of light that is parallel to the principal axis again. Right? The second ray of light. And if it is parallel, then you pass through the focus. Right? So now let me pass through the focus. And I can draw that. My red ink is not enough. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So after the reflection, so it will pass like that. Okay. Sorry, guys. I could have made it better. So, ray of light, you know, after the you know, reflection from the 
meter. Then we get a point over here. This is gonna be line. I just draw two, I mean, you can draw more, I mean, if you like to, but I just need like a two. Now, uh, this is the case whenever your object is outside the focus, and I can easily tell that image properties. The image Number one, it's a real or virtual? Real. Because real point, after the reflection from the surface, <coughs> inner surface, they meet each other. So this kind of image is called real image. The image is real, okay? The image is real. Second, it is upright or inverted. Inverted. It's inverted. Okay, I just say inverted. It's inverted image. Yeah. And number three, it is on the same side of object. Your object on the left side, whenever image found, is also the left side. On the same side of the mirror. Yeah, you can operate and repeat it. Let's see this, my hand is this, yeah. Oh, the oh, my hand up here. Oh, yeah. It'll be bigger and it'll be facing towards you. Okay, yeah. this is the one very important point over here that concave mm -hmm. mirror can form yeah. so both real and bigger. virtual image this depending on there. where you place the object. Kind of mirror is there? If you place an Maybe object inside the focal point, it gets a lot of you will get virtual image. If you place an object outside the focal point, you can make a It's hard to see because everything's blurry, but it'll be upside down. Okay. So, uh, you know, like uh, we want to learn physics so from our, like, you know, uh, daily life also. Yeah. I can tell you to do one more experiment at home. Yeah. If you have a spoon. Closer. Yeah. Very shiny, it has to be very shiny, okay? Refracting surface. Spoon is like this. That means it's very similar to the concave mirror. Because you can't look one. This is a shiny part, is a shiny part of the spoon, right? So, what you do, just like a place in front of you, you can see your image on the spoon surface, right? If you change the distance between you and your spoon, <laughs> You will see your image behaving something dramatically. Sometimes you will see your face is like a upright. If you look a little bit far away, you will see your face is up, upright down. Please do that experiment at home. So if you are inside, because you are a very closer, you are inside the focal point of this one, then you will see your face is not inverted. But if you go a little bit far away, if you are going away from the focal point, your face is going to be inverted. Yeah. This is the real thing you can do. Mm -hmm. But it soon has it's to be shiny. Like, okay? The spoon yeah. surface has to be shiny. Like, 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 if the spoon is already used for a long time, your spoon won't be like the shiny, then you don't see that in the behavior. But you know, you can do experiments at home that by changing the distance between you and the spoon, you are changing the object distance and uh, you are changing the behavior of image. The image can be real or virtual depending on where you place the object. Okay? So anyway, so uh, I need to take care of this time also. So let me do something over here. So uh, the distance between the center of the mirror and object is called object distance. People just write down P. Object distance 
and you definitely know that this is a focal point and and the distance between the center of the, this mirror and the image is called the image distance of the writer i is the image distance okay so these are the some of the i mean uh, you have to pay attention this is the focal length and okay this is the distance between object and center as if the p okay and this is the distance between the image and as it's called okay this is how image is formed and uh, the special case that if you place an object in a focal point we never i mean uh, do that at that time uh, it's very hard to visualize the image so i just disregard that uh, i mean uh, uh, that point over here i just consider like a and c case where that image is formed depending on the whether it's inside or outside the focus area. And this is only for the concave mirror. If you have a convex mirror, convex mirror, no matter where you place an object, it always forms the virtual image. Convex is like a something that it always makes a virtual image. I'll show you how over here. These are two special cases for the concave mirror. Depending on where you place the object, but for the convex mirror, you can draw the ray diagram again. So let me be a little lazy over here. I just put the head that's it over here. So uh, you can do the ray diagram for the convex mirror. Um, if you have a convex mirror. No matter where you place an object, it always makes a virtual image because you have to extrapolate because they are diverging surface. Uh, let me do such a convex mirror. This is the shape of the mirror look like. So uh, if I have principal axis like this, okay. And it's a sine part of okay? it. Mirror is sine part over here. This is my convex, convex mirror. Okay, and uh, and the focal point is that you know on the right hand side, right? So your focus is on the right hand side, and you will not have you know, like any reference over here where you place an object, because the object has to be this side to get the image. That side is not reflecting part anymore, right? So you can place in any like you know uh, object over here, an object here. I mean you can definitely you know uh, reapply it going this way, it form this way. Okay, I told you that second reapply is parallel to the principal axis, right? <coughs> the second one is. Way it will be reflected, but it appears to come from the focus like that. Okay, so you can see that ray of light after the reflection from the mirror surface is diverging, right? Then you need to do extrapolation. Whenever you have an extrapolation, you have an image over here. This is a place where your image is formed. Right? And image properties. The image is virtual and is upright and it is on the other side of the mirror other side of the mirror okay so this is the image properties uh, that is formed by the convex mirror 
in the exam in a true and a false question. If I give a statement that virtual image to always upright, what do you think? Is going to be true or false statement? True. This is a virtual image, this is upright. You have a virtual image upright. A plain mirror makes a virtual image. It's also upright. If you stand in front of a plain mirror, it makes a virtual image. It's always upright. Right? So virtual image is always upright. Real image is always inverted. And virtual image is always on the other side of the mirror. In the plain mirror, whenever you sit in front of your know, plain mirror, you will see your image, virtual image, but that will be behind the mirror. Right? This one also makes a virtual image, it's gonna be behind the mirror. It also makes a virtual image, but this is a behind the mirror. So virtual image is always upright and it's behind the mirror. Okay? So those are the, like some minor details. Um, so I have like a solve one of the physics problem over here. Uh, it's like it's giving the information, you know, no matter where you place the object, you know, always place the you know, virtual image. Um, let me solve, you know, one of the problems over here before that. So, so uh, to solve, you know, some physics problem over here, we need like uh, some of the formulas over here. Uh, let me uh, go quickly over here. Some of the important physics formula. Um, so for the mirror, uh, to find the location of image and the uh, magnification, we use some of the formula and then we know where we're going to derive over here. Uh, let me write uh, formulas that we're gonna use. One is called mirror formula. One over S equal to one over P plus one over I. Okay. S is the focal point, P is the object distance, I is the image distance, number one formula, okay? Number two formula is that if sometimes you, know, you have given the radius of curvature, then if you want to find the focal point, you're gonna use this one, one over two R. You can write the capital R is equal to R, okay? So it doesn't matter. And number three is the magnification. The magnification gives the information that how big is the image formed by an object, I mean mirror, okay? The magnification has a two formula. One is S prime over S, the size of the image divided by the size of the object, or you can also have N equal to minus I over P. Okay, so uh, for the magnification, you have a two formulas. Just pay attention that for the first formula over here, you have you know like absolute uh, value over here. Okay, uh, I can write it over here. P is the object distance. I is the image distance. Image distance. Okay, uh, and R is the radius of curvature. Radius of curvature. Okay. And you have uh, S is a focal point, definitely. S is a focal length. Focal length. And uh, X prime is the image height. Image. Or oh, height of the image, okay? It's, a, it's the same thing. Height of the image. And S is the. Object. Or height of object, you can define like that. So this is the only formula we're going to use in the solving the some of the uh, problems in the physics, okay? Uh, especially for the mirror, okay? Um, I really want to solve one of the problems over here uh, in today's class. Because I need to assign the homework for you guys for this week. Okay, uh, over here, let me give like one of the uh, new uh, ball here. 
So over here, the magnification is given by the height of the image there are the height of object. If that is the case, what will be the value of magnification for a plane mirror? It will be one. Because if you stand in front of a mirror, your image and object are going to be the same height. Then if you put the same number, you will get the value of one. So in the exam, if I tell that, hey, the magnification <coughs> for a plane mirror is one, that will be the true statement. All right, so that, uh, let me solve one of the problems and then finish the class for today. Uh, there are many, many uh, problems over here. I have like a couple of problems over here. But I just do one of them, you know, for, for, for you guys. Let me do this one, okay? Okay, so I even have a hint for you guys. Um, a two centimeter tall object, fifteen centimeter in front this of our base here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And the focal length is given forty centimeter. Okay. Convex mirror has a focal length of forty centimeter. If you have given this information, I need to find location of image, the height of the image. I didn't need to know whether the image is important or upright, real or virtual, and I need to draw the ray diagram. So let me quickly jump into this problem because uh, we almost done with that last time. So, uh, so this. It's a very yeah, easy problem, this. so uh, you, you might already know how to solve this. Even I have put like hint over there in the left uh, note. I think F and I are easy. So, uh, Basically, but the in this form, you have given a two centimeter tall oh. object. This is the object height, oh, because right? Maybe, I guess so. Edge is given, height of the object is given two centimeter tall, two centimeter tall. Is 15 centimeter in front of convex mirror. That is the point where you place your object. This should be object distance, right? So I just have P equal to 15 centimeter. A two centimeter tall object is placed 15 centimeter in front of convex mirror. And the mirror has 30 centimeter as a focal length. So focal length is given, F value is given, which is 30 centimeter. This is a given information in the problem. Now, determine the location of image. I need to find, given this information, I need to find what is the image distance. Right? And so far we have one of three formulas. One of the three formulas. You have given the focal length. You know what is the object distance? Can you calculate the height? Yeah. It's just a simple. I just you know, leave you guys for the exercise. You know, one over F is equal to one over P plus one over I. Just use this formula to get the I value. Okay? So B. So uh, even I have like that value over here, you know, like uh, uh, once you solve it, you know, according to the book, you will get I value equal to minus 10 centimeters. Okay? In a B, find the height of image. So I need to find x prime, the height of image, x prime. Okay? Again, we have 
one couple of formulas over here. Number one, I cannot use to find the height of the image. I cannot use this one. It doesn't have any height. The one day I can see the height of the image I can find is from this formula. Right? To find the height of the image is prime. Edge value is given. If I know what is the magnitude value, magnification value, then I can use this formula to get a height. Right? But to find the magnification, I can use this formula because A and the variable minus I value you just got from part A and you have all the distance. Right? You can use this formula. So uh, N equal to minus I over P. Okay, just plug in the value. The I value might be 10 centimeters you're gonna get from the part A. And P value. You just have it from there, which is two centimeters, oh sorry, 15 centimeters. So whatever the value you get, after that, use this formula, n equal to s prime over h. The s prime value, you need to calculate, s value is given two centimeters. Right? And the C and D is a knowledge based question. Is the image upright or inverted? What will be your answer? What will be the answer? Is upright or inverted? Upright, what? So I can say that this is the image like a negative sign, that means a virtual image. If virtual image, I know that's upright. And the answer is that uh, it's uh, upright. Is the image real or virtual? It's a virtual because I can see the negative sign over here. Negative sign over here means that it's a virtual. D. So the formation of image by drawing the ray diagram. This is a little bit challenging. Let me do it. Uh, I have a few more minutes. Let me do it. Uh, this is a very, the last part is very important. You need to put all the information over here. So uh, let me draw over here, okay? Um, so this is the, some of the step you have to follow. So the first step is that, what kind of mirror it is? It is convex. Okay, let me draw the convex mirror. Okay, so once you have a mirror, just draw the principal axis. Next one is to find the focus. The focus value is 40 centimeter. So I mean you can just, I mean, make some kind of effort. So my body is straight line, okay guys, so try to make a straight line, okay? The focus is on the 40 centimeter, it's just put like, you know, okay, this is the focus, okay, just like that. Right? And it's a focal length, I just say this is the, Right? So I have to do. Second step is to find the object distance. Object distance is 15 centimeter. If you consider that this is 40 centimeter, whenever you draw an object that's gonna be almost half of this one. So let me put it object. We have an upright object over here. Right? And this is gonna be 15 centimeter. We don't have to like exactly the same, you know, like just you know, give an idea that, you know, how the scale look like, okay? Now, just throw the I mean, diagram now. Uh, there are a couple of reapply. The first one is that reapply, it goes to the center. Look at it like this. Right? Isn't it? The second one is going to be parallel to the. Parallel to the 
this principal axis, right here, and it appears to come from a focus. And this is my drawing again, you know. Maybe a little raw. So they are near each other after I start this over here. This is, you know, your location of image. Image, okay. This is image, and definitely the distance of image is 10 centimeter. This is 10 centimeter. Okay, you got a 10 centimeter from the calculus, right? So this is like 10 centimeters. This is 40 centimeter, this is 10 centimeter, and it makes sense to me. If you make like an image is very far away over here, and if you consider this is a 30 centimeter and your image is 10 centimeter, that's gonna be bad drawing. Okay, so make sure that you level it, it's a convex mirror. Okay, so I think uh, it's a red item. You don't have to be like you know like a in a real artist, but you need to draw whatever you like a axe or whatever is there. So so I just label object, image, object distance, image distance, principal axis, and uh, I just label the my you know convex here. So how you can draw the red item. So with that I can finish the class for today. Uh, I will assign the homework. Uh, right.